One of the biggest complaints about the Modern Warfare 3 campaign is how short it was, and one of the smaller or lesser seen complaints about the campaign is the lack of Modern Warfare 3 guns in the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. Well, I'm about to sort of fix both of those complaints with this video. Welcome to the new guns in Modern Warfare 3. I know a lot of us breezed through the campaign in like half an hour and were most likely disappointed with the majority of the usable weapons being straight out of Modern Warfare 2, but if your minimap in the open combat missions looks like this, then I have some good news for you. There's actually quite a lot more to explore in these open combat missions, and while they don't even come close to the replayability of Skyrim, you will actually get some extra playtime out of this campaign. God knows it needs it. Even putting the Modern Warfare 3 guns aside, simply playing the open combat missions for a longer period of time versus speedrunning will grant you more dialogue and backstory as well. I'm pretty sure none of us knew that Milena actually killed her husband to take all of his money, because that dialogue is only available if you take your time on the Oligarch mission. What's the intel on Mark and Milena? How far back they go, Watcher? Her husband and Makarov go way back. What happened to the husband? He fell on a knife nine times. Vickers. Milena got his fortune and Mac got an army. But I'm getting a little sidetracked. What I want to do with this video is go through all of the open combat missions in Modern Warfare 3 and show you guys the most important locations to loot, whether that's for Modern Warfare 3 guns that we didn't have access to, or really helpful loot for beating the game on Veteran, or even just for interesting stuff. So let's get started. We go with the Veteran from the US, Merc. Alright, welcome back. Now, obviously, I didn't find all of these items by myself. I mean, I did go back into these missions, and I did all the exploration on my own, and I tried to find as many things as possible, but ultimately, I did need a guide to help me out, so I'll have a link in the description to the website that I used in order to find all of these items, but specifically for this video, we're just going to be going over certain things. But if you guys are curious, and you want to complete all of this, you want to find all of the weapons and items for every single mission, and ultimately get the achievement, I think it's called Gearhead. Let me just double check that, but yeah, it's right here, Gearhead. Collect all weapons and field upgrades from supply boxes in open combat missions. If you want to get that done, definitely check out the link in the description for the guide for all these missions. But yeah, man, let's get started here with precious cargo. There's a total of 21 weapons and items to discover, but let's go over the most important ones. Now, as we go through these different missions, I also want to explain what I think Sledgehammer Games was trying to accomplish with each different mission, as well as obviously showing off the new Modern Warfare 3 guns that you probably didn't even get access to when you were playing these missions. Now, I think it's safe to say for the very first mission here, precious cargo, they're not going to go over the top and share anything too crazy, but it does get pretty awesome as we go on. But specifically for this mission, I think the KVD Enforcer and the RGL-80 Launcher, these are the two most interesting weapons that you'll be able to loot, and they will both be in multiplayer when the full game comes out on Friday. So for now, I'm going to start the mission and equip them so you can see them, but I'll also show you where you can find them. Not on the ground where Farah's sleeping. All right, guys, so here's the KVD Enforcer Sniper Rifle. This is a brand new sniper rifle for Modern Warfare 3. We didn't have this in Modern Warfare 2. It's semi-auto. I don't think anyone's going to be going too crazy over this thing. I feel like this is going to be the weaker semi-auto sniper rifle. You might even have to actually land a headshot to get a one-shot kill in multiplayer, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm just trying to make some educated guesses here. Because it is pretty spammy. I mean, look at that. It's got a pretty fast fire rate. But if we should be worried about any new weapon in Modern Warfare 3, it's going to be this right here, the RGL-80. This is a six-round grenade launcher. It's very similar to that one launcher we had in Advanced Warfare. I think the main difference, though, is that that launcher fired, like, timed Semtex rounds, whereas this one just fires straight-up explosive frags. Like, look at this thing. We'll be able to use this in multiplayer. I don't think we need one-man army danger close, because that's exactly what this thing is. You can also direct impact people with it. It's pretty funny. Overall, a pretty insane launcher, and we're going to have this in multiplayer. It was on their weapon list, so this thing will be in multiplayer. I can't stress that enough because it's going to be terrifying. But yeah, let me show you guys where to find these guns. First up, the KVD Enforcer is actually going to be on this ship, so I'll show you guys where to go. So this is the specific location for it on the minimap. It's also right next to the GPS tracker main objective. All you have to do is walk into this room, and boom. It's just right there. Now, I already have the sniper, but I can also just pick it up and get extra ammo. But yeah, that's where you find the sniper. Now, let's show you where to find the RGL-80. If you can believe it, it's actually here on the ship as well. It's going to be at this weapon crate on the map, and literally... Wait, let's take care of that guy. It is just right here. So we can just pick that up, get some extra ammo, and we're good to go. Now, as you play and explore this mission some more, you'll find weapons like this one too, the Rival 9. This is a Modern Warfare 3 gun, but we had access to this in the beta. I'm only specifically covering new guns that we did not have access to in the multiplayer beta. Stuff that's completely brand new. As I look through the list, there's really nothing else that's too crazy or too new, so we're going to move on to the next mission. But I did at least want to point out the fact that I think that what Sledgehammer was trying to do with this mission is just introduce us to the idea of the open combat missions and just let us freely explore and play however we want to. One thing that is kind of crazy is you can find a vehicle right here. Spotted your vehicle, Graves. Thought that might come in handy. <laughs> it's apparently Graves' vehicle, too, so we can actually get this. We'll just go on over here. We'll ascend to the top. Yeah, from here, we could just jump down and parachute, and we can get Graves' vehicle. 
I don't think anything too crazy happens as a result. This is more or less just for fun. And then you could just drive it right off the boat over here and then use it. I don't know if there's an achievement for doing this, but I mean, if you want to get it, that's how you do it. <laughs> we can run people over too, like it's GTA. But I'm getting sidetracked. We need to move on to the next one. Next open combat mission is Reactor. It's back to back, so let's get it going. Yeah, I think the game remembers the last couple of weapons that I looted, and these are definitely the two best that you can get for this mission. We have a brand new assault rifle called the Sidewinder, and we also have a minigun. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and start with that because these are the coolest weapons you can get without a doubt. So yeah, guys, here it is. The new Sidewinder assault rifle. It comes with a hybrid sight, and it only has 20 rounds, but man, this thing hits hard. I'll see if I can find some enemies so I can show you, but we also have the minigun, which I don't know if this is going to be a multiplayer or if it could potentially be like a kill streak for multiplayer, but in the campaign, you get to just use it. I love this assault rifle. It is slow firing, but it's hard hitting, man. Just look at this. It like takes all these enemies out with one bullet too. It is a beefy, powerful assault rifle and it has got these guys mad. So we're going to bust out the minigun now. You can also just use this to destroy the helicopter. I mean, it will take a little bit. I promise you, it will die. Yep, it's starting to turn red. Oh, there it is. So yeah, it'll take a little bit to destroy the helicopters with the minigun, but you can do that if you want. In general, this thing just shreds through the enemies. It is so much fun to use. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is most likely just the juggernaut minigun. So this probably will not be usable in multiplayer, but the Sidewinder definitely is, and this assault rifle is a lot of fun to use. So let me show you guys where to find them. So for the Sidewinder assault rifle, this is where you're going to find it over here. It's going to be in this weapon box. Oh, I stand corrected. Well, at least we're playing on recruit. I'm just about to beat him with the minigun. <laughs> yeah, so pretty straightforward. Just come to the back of the building over here and climb this ladder. And I believe the loot box, the weapon loot box thingy. Yep, there it is. Right there. Thank you for the ammo. Wait, only 40 rounds? Yikes. We'll be able to loot ammo in other places, though. But it's definitely not a lot. But, I mean, just look at this thing. Oh, boy. Hey, 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 hey. Don't kill me. But yeah, this thing takes out most enemies in one shot. Now, I'm not too sure about the armored enemies, but still, this thing is just so powerful, man. I had a blast using this thing when I found it in the campaign, and I am pretty sure this is going to be a really strong assault rifle in multiplayer. But next up, here's where you can find the minigun. Now, the minigun is actually going to be all the way down here on the other side of the map, so it's going to take a little bit to get there, but it's going to be worth it. Now, Karina was actually telling me about this, but you can apparently pick up these flammable canisters. You have to throw it at an enemy, and then if you shoot it and blow it up, you'll get an achievement called Catch, or like, Hey Catch, something like that. I thought that one was pretty funny is definitely a really like hilarious achievement to go after so definitely try that out if you want to but yeah the minigun is in this weapon box in this room now as you can see the door is stuck so all you need to do is go to this ladder right here climb all the way up to the very top and we're just going to keep going until we're in this building right here and if you're wondering why you can't just fall down and get in there you don't have to worry about that you can either just shoot the chair or shoot the red barrel blow it up and now the door is open just go ahead and go right back down Look at that, the door is open and there's a freaking minigun. Definitely one of the most fun things to use in the campaign if you wanna go loud and just like destroy everyone. Now the next couple of things I wanna show you on this mission, they're not brand new Modern Warfare 3 guns, but they are pretty cool places to go to for certain items. The very first one is over in this section, you can actually loot a stealth bomber, which is pretty important for one of the achievements on this mission, which is to destroy every helicopter with a different kill streak. They call them armaments, but I mean, they're kill streaks in Call of Duty. It's just easier to call them that. It's a lot easier to recognize. Also, if you come up here, there should be, yep, the explosive crossbow you can loot that too if you want to it's not anything too crazy but i figured i pointed out since i'm up here but yeah you can loot this bomb drone as well and this i think will count as one of the armaments for the achievement you can also just find the stealth bomber right over here and this thing is insane i'm just gonna go ahead and call it in i think i might have called it on myself this could be really funny all right the helo's right there let's get out of here we're in the way of the stealth bomber right now let's go <laughs> look at it go it's insane man it should get this helicopter Oh, maybe not. Okay, it didn't actually destroy it. Could have just been a bad call, but it is possible. I've done it before. But yeah, the next spot we want to get to is actually up on this crane. Okay, so our next location is here on the map. You can loot a SAM turret and a VTOL over here as well. What you're going to do is you're going to take the Ascender and go all the way up to the crane over here. From here, just keep going forward and you're going to find something pretty cool right... Oh, not quite yet. Right here. There you go. Fire round intervention, which is pretty sick. Now, this isn't brand new. It's not anything too crazy. Again, not brand new, but I figured I'd point this out. If you wanted to come up here and snipe, maybe you're doing this on veteran and you want to like slowly pick off the enemies or just miss miserably. Oh my. <laughs> what? There we go. Okay. But yeah, I figured I'd show you guys this because it is pretty strong. And if you want to approach the mission in this way, well, you can if you want to. But yeah, that's going to do it for Reactor. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so I might have ended the mission a little early, but you actually can get the RGL-80 on that one as well. I figured I'd just skip over it though, since I already covered it in the Precious Cargo mission. I think you might actually be able to get that launcher in other missions as well, but we'll see as we go. Next open combat mission is Crash Site. Now, right off the bat, there's only 10 weapons and items to discover. I think that Sledgehammer Games intended for this mission to be a little bit more like stealthy and slow. Whereas with this mission, you can just get like the mini 
minigun, the launcher. You could do all kinds of crazy stuff and just go insane with it. But yeah, let's load up Crash Site. Now I gotta keep it real with you guys. I actually just went through the entire like weapon list and stuff and there's actually nothing brand new in this mission. So I think we could actually just skip over it. But again, if you're a completionist and you wanna get everything done, I'll have a link in the description to the full like campaign walkthrough and guides for this stuff. But just know that there's absolutely nothing brand new in this mission, which I actually do wanna touch on at the end of this video. But for now, we're still gonna be going over new guns and stuff. But yeah, next mission up is Oligarch. This one actually has 21 items and there's a lot more stuff to find on this mission. It's a pretty good one, so let's go. Right off the bat, there is a cast off 545 with gold camo from Modern Warfare 2. I know a lot of people were like hyping this up and stuff on Twitter, but this is actually not the mastery camo for Modern Warfare 3. I actually covered all the new mastery camo stuff for Modern Warfare 3 in a previous video, which I'll have linked in the description if you guys wanna check it out. The first Modern Warfare 3 mastery camo for multiplayer is actually a camo called Gilded, so this isn't really the gold camo for the game, but you can loot it in this mission and it looks pretty cool. As far as it goes for other things you're gonna wanna look out for, the next thing on the list would, well, <laughs> you can get the minigun again, which I will show you guys where to find that because it's pretty awesome. But this is another brand new weapon here called the DM-56. Obviously, I'm gonna show you guys exactly where to find that. We also have the Akimbo Deagle, which has gold camo as well. I'll show you guys where to find that one. I think I actually found this when I was streaming the campaign, so that was pretty neat. Didn't really have to explore too hard to find that. We also have the RGL-80, and I can show you guys where to find that as well. I think I actually might have skipped over one of the other new guns, or maybe it's just not showing up. Oh, that's because I have it equipped already. It, this is the bolt-action sniper rifle that we're gonna be getting at the launch of Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. It is the Cat AMR. This sniper rifle is so cool, and I cannot wait to show you guys where you can find this. But yeah, let's go ahead and start up the mission, and I'll show you guys the two brand new Modern Warfare 3 guns that you can find find on oligarchs go ahead and skip that and i'll show you guys here we go so we're in the water right now this isn't like the best place to be we'll have to get out just go ahead and take this guy out yeah so this is the silence dm56 you can also fire it in canted mode but i think it's better like this this thing seems pretty good it's got a decent fire rate I think for multiplayer, it should be pretty strong. I'd be surprised if it's not like a two to four shot kill in the chest. And then next up we have the Cat AMR. This thing looks so awesome, man. It's really giving me some Apex Legends Kraper sniper rifle vibes like this thing. Oh, this is our bolt. Now it is pretty slow firing, but I'm sure this thing is gonna be like so powerful. For open lobbies and stuff, we're definitely gonna have to test what kind of collat you can get with this thing in multiplayer. Cause I'm sure it's gonna be insane. Especially with some anti-armor rounds or something like that. Forget about it. Oh yeah, they're very mad. Oh, good, though. This thing's got a thermal. Oh, wait. He's got plates. Boom. Come on, take him out. There you go. Oh, I love the little thunderous reverb in the background for the sniper. It's so nice. I love it when they have the sniper rifle sound so cool. Oh, let's get some ammo. I think, yes, this is where you can find the night vision goggles. It's literally just right here. I wanted to point that out as well because we're going to be exploring the caves over here and you're going to need the night vision goggles to see more easily over there. So this is actually where you can find the cat AMR sniper rifle. This is where we're going to go first. We're going to put on our night vision goggies and I'll show you guys where to go. As you make your way into the cave, there's a fork in the road. You're going to want to go left instead. And then you're gonna make your way to the ascender over here, which yes, you're gonna have to find the ascender as well. And then once you're up here, the sniper rifle's just waiting for you right there. There it is, the explosive cat AMR. Now we already have it, so that basically just gives us more ammo, but yeah, that's where you can find it. Now, if we go through this section of the cave, like the underwater portion, this is more or less just like a shortcut. There's really nothing too crazy down here. It just takes you to the back entrance. And you'll see, yeah, it just takes us right over here. So this is more or less just a, like a flank route, but that cave does conveniently take us to our next weapon, which is the DM-56. Once you get out of the cave, you just have to make your way over here. We're gonna have to take out these guards, obviously, but once you take out that guy, you can just make your way to the roof over here and the silence DM-56 is right there. And honestly, this is a pretty decent weapon to have for this mission. Like it's a pretty, okay, this guy has armor. That's, that's bad. All right. Almost a whole magazine to kill an armored enemy, not great. But against the unarmored enemies, it's not too bad. Okay, all these guys have armor, that's beautiful. Really helping my demonstration here, you unchill mother. Next up is the RGL-80 launcher, which you can find right here. Really not too far away, and it's also next to the loadout changer, so that's pretty neat. Literally just right here in this building. Oh, hey buddy, wow. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, it's just right here. Pick that up, we can use that if we want. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Please kill these guys. Yeah, okay, they're dead. But next up, let me show you guys where to find the minigun. You're gonna find it right here at the top left corner of the map. I believe you can also get a precision airstrike as well and a SAM turret, which is pretty good for dealing with the bomb drones. Yeah, it's just in this drop right over here. You can get a precision airstrike, you can get the minigun, and you can also get a SAM turret. Simply enough, just put the SAM turret down. It'll shoot the drones as you're doing the mission. You can also just call an airstrike on the building and kill a lot of the guards that are out there. It's funny because you think that you have to do this mission stealthily, but you don't have to at all. I think you also get an achievement for blowing up all the cars in the garage over here. Oh God, bomb drone, bomb drone. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Hold up. I think we got a couple more to destroy. 
Did I get the achievement? Oh, yep, there we go. I think she'll notice. Yep, I didn't do that one yet, but I knew that you could actually complete it right over here. Which, by the way, this is where you get the gold AK. This is where it is on the minimap. Bomb drone, please don't kill me. It's right there. Oh, God. Okay, we're good. But yeah, this is where you can get a gold AK in the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. And I mean, that's pretty neat. And last but not least, this is where you can find the Akimbo Gold Deagle. It's gonna be in Milena's mansion. So we're gonna have to make our way in there and hopefully not blow up. Okay, that's not too bad. We can shoot out this window. We can just climb into here, I think. Oh God. All right, we are in the mansion. Let's go find those gold deagles. It's somewhere over here. Yep, right there. Always good to have a pistol by the bedside. But yeah, that's basically all the cool stuff that you can find on this mission. I feel like Oligarch actually has the coolest loot pool out of all of these open combat missions, without a doubt. We got gold guns, we got some brand new Modern Warfare 3 weapons, got the minigun and the grenade launcher in this mission. Overall, out of all the open combat missions, I feel like this one just has the best stuff to go after. But yeah, that's gonna do it for Oligarch. Now we're gonna move on to our next mission here, which is High Rise, which ironically enough, it's not the original High Rise from Modern Warfare 2. This mission is more or less, I think, meant for speedrunning. And I'll just tell you guys this now. This is the worst mission to be going for all the weapons and items because you have to loot on different floors and stuff It's just got a confusing layout. It's it's just bad I'm actually gonna double check to see if there's anything worth looting on this. I mean, there's some kind of neat stuff There's the explosive crossbow. There's the minigun again, but I don't think there's really any new guns most of them are modern warfare 2 weapons or Modern Warfare 3 weapons that we use in the multiplayer beta. So yeah, there's actually not anything too new here. I think we could probably skip this one, but I can also play the clips on how to get the minigun and the crossbow as well, because technically those are weapons that you have to go to the first floor to loot. But realistically, if you want to actually get the crossbow and the minigun, you're going to have to go to the corresponding stairwells on, I think, like the sixth or the seventh floor respectively for both of the different sections because sure they're on the first floor but the doors themselves are blocked off with chairs so the only way that you can actually get access to these weapons is to actually ascend and climb up to some of the higher levels and then once you find those stairwells you just pull your chute and you slowly descend into those rooms and then you can shoot the doors open and, and it will stay open and then you can get access to both of those guns but honestly it's not really worth it if you've already unlocked them and gotten them in the other missions you know what i mean like the crossbow and the minigun are not necessarily going to make this mission that much easier maybe it will for veteran and obviously if you're trying to discover everything then you're going to want to get those weapons but we're going to move on because there's nothing super new in this mission and that's actually going to bring us to our last open combat mission for the modern warfare 3 campaign which is Gorodam. okay in fairness there's not anything too crazy on this mission but there is a new modern warfare 3 weapon and it is the kvd enforcer right here this one is a semi-auto marksman rifle and i'll show you guys where to find it it's not anything too crazy actually Wait a second, I could have sworn we had this in the very first mission. Let me just double check that real quick. Yeah, okay, so the KVD Enforcer is actually in the very first mission as well. But in that mission, I think it was labeled as a sniper rifle, whereas in this one, it's a marksman rifle. So I'm not exactly too sure about that. But since this is a new gun that we didn't have access to in the beta, I'm gonna show you guys where to find it on this mission, as well as one other pretty cool lootable item. But aside from that, the Gora Dam doesn't really have anything too crazy. Yep, so here it is right here, the KVD Enforcer. This might actually be exactly the same as the one in Precious Cargo, and maybe I'm just getting it like mixed up. I do apologize in advance if that's getting kind of confusing, but I'm gonna show you guys where to find it. It's gonna be all the way here at the top. Now you can make your way all the way down over here and then just drop straight down and you'll be able to get it, but I believe you can also just parachute to it right here. Yeah, because we have a lot of momentum. We'll just use this to carry us all the way over here. And yep, there's the box right there. We'll just land right there, and there it is, the KVD Enforcer. Now, we did already get to use this thing, so I think you guys already know how it goes with this gun. It's a somewhat hard-hitting semi-auto rifle. It's not too bad. I also have a Breacher drone. Oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna restart the mission just so I can quickly show you guys probably the best thing you can get on this mission. All right, so we're back up top, and we're gonna actually just go straight down over here. If we look at the minimap overview, this is what we're looking for right here, which is actually a chopper gunner. You could just jump straight down. Granted, you're gonna have to try to avoid the enemies. It's really not too hard. But if you just drop right over here, you can immediately get access to a chopper gunner, which is pretty awesome. And we'll just land right there. You can pick up a chopper gunner. There you go. Now, this could be pretty useful if you're playing the campaign on veteran. But one thing that I did notice is that they tend to shoot this thing down really fast. I don't know why. I'll try to get as many kills as I possibly can. Use the rockets too, for sure. You don't want them to stop you. You want to be able to get as many kills as you can. I feel like this would be pretty helpful for veterans. So yeah, while there's not a lot of crazy new guns to use on this mission, the chopper gunner is probably the most helpful thing. Gives you a pretty nice start. Look at that. The chopper's gonna take off or oh, i've seen it get shot down before i guess if you survive it just flies away which is kind of neat but yeah aside from that you know there's the rgl 80 which you can find as well but i'm not going to cover that again because we already covered it multiple times now the main reason i showed it off in oligarch as well is just because there's so much cool stuff to find on that map and yeah even though there's like 20 things you can loot on gore dam 
it's not anything too crazy. It's a lot of Modern Warfare 2 weapons and a lot of reused stuff that we've already seen before. So yeah. Now, while we finish up this mission, I do want to share my thoughts on the open combat missions in Modern Warfare 3 with you guys, because I know a lot of people are really not vibing with this. They're saying that it's basically just DMZ put into the campaign. And I absolutely see where people are coming from with that. But at the same time, I want us to keep in mind that even for like some of the oldest Call of Duty campaigns, the campaign maps that they typically use for COD campaigns are also then just ported into multiplayer. They might tweak and change some things to make those maps work better in multiplayer, but for the most part, the campaign basically just is multiplayer maps. So I'm not exactly sure why people are getting so upset that they've put, you know, like the Warzone map or the DMZ map, whatever, into the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. If that's lazy, then every single Call of Duty game is lazy. And I'm sure some people will make that argument, but even the COD games that people love the most, like Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 1, whatever the game might be, they've done it for basically every COD game because it just saves them development time. Now, obviously, there's been some COD games that have campaign missions that are completely unique and you will not be able to play those maps in multiplayer, but that does depend on how much time they have to develop the game as well as how much resources it's going to take up because if this game didn't use the Warzone map to tell the campaign story, this game would probably be like three to 400 gigs, man, and I don't think that's what any of us want. But yeah, there's a couple other things I do want to say about the open combat missions as well. I got to keep it real. I don't think that these are better than linear traditional Call of Duty campaign missions, but I do at least appreciate the fact that they are trying something different, something new that we haven't seen before in a campaign. Look, I don't personally think that this is the way that the campaign should go moving forward. Like, I don't really want to see it go like the Halo Infinite route where we have an open combat mission or like open world type of campaign and we just completely throw away the classic Call of Duty missions. I don't want to see that. But at the same time, if this is what they're going to give us, I would at least like to give some feedback. I'm not going to lie, man. I think it is super lame that this is the Modern Warfare 3 campaign and most of the guns that we use in this campaign, most of the guns that everyone will experience are going to be Modern Warfare 2 2022 guns. I think that's just super lame. You really do have to kind of go out of your way and find the loot boxes in order to use brand new guns. I'm really not the biggest fan of that. I think that the campaign should have its own identity and a big part of that is the weapons that you use. What I would have done instead if it was up to me is I would have had everyone starting off with Modern Warfare 3 guns and then have you loot some Modern Warfare 2 weapons that, you know, could potentially have some other really cool camos like Platinum, Polyatomic, and Orion camo to potentially entice people who are new to Modern Warfare 3 to potentially check out the Modern Warfare 2 weapons that carry forward and then maybe grind those camos because they see them in the campaign and they're like, oh, that looks cool. And I think there's also also some other new Modern Warfare 3 guns that just are not in the campaign as well. I think in general, they should have just had all of the new guns, everything at our disposal in the campaign. That's basically how it's always been for COD. And I think that was just a big miss for this game. Now, what I think is still really interesting about the open combat missions is that these are some of the easiest and fastest missions to complete, which is ultimately why most people finish this campaign in like three to four hours. But if you actually take your time and you try to do some achievement hunting and you try to go and unlock all of the weapons and the loot on these open combat missions, missions, you can get roughly an extra hour or two out of the game. And that's not including trying to beat the campaign on veteran, which I don't even know if it's that hard to do. But yeah, man, I went ahead and did this because I was really disappointed with how short the campaign was. And I just wanted to get some more value, some more time out of the campaign. And these missions do offer a little bit more of that. Granted, it's not a ton of extra time for your money, but I figured I would mention that because on my review video, I think a lot of people thought that I had like an overly positive review or people were just shocked that I even had good things to say about this campaign. And I think that's ultimately because I try to look at it in a more rational way. I'm not not trying to just hate on the campaign blindly but at the same time there's people saying that i was paid off by activision to say good things about the campaign which is not true at all i'm just gonna tell you guys straight up if i was paid to say anything good about call of duty i would have to mention that it's sponsored content and you would either see stuff on screen or in the description saying that it is a sponsored video i was not paid a single penny a single doubloon to say a single positive thing about this campaign as i played this campaign more and had more time to mull it over though I don't think it's better than Modern Warfare 2019. I still think that's one of the better COD campaigns we've had in recent years. I don't think it tops that, but I do think that it's better than Modern Warfare 2 2022. That campaign really did not have any stakes or really tell anything in the story, and the gameplay is basically identical to what we have here. But again, man, I think the biggest mistake that they made with this campaign was just having it be so short by default. Like the default experience is just really short and also just taking away the momentum entirely with the ending and not letting us continue the story and keep going. This video is not going to have any spoilers, so you don't have to worry about that. But what I will say though, is that the campaign was just starting to get good 
when it ended. It's one of the biggest cliffhangers I think we've ever seen for a COD campaign, and they could just be doing that to get us even more excited for like Modern Warfare 4 or whatever else they have planned for this subseries. But that's just how it is, man. That's how they made this campaign, and they're just gonna have to live with that choice. That's exactly why everyone is saying that this is like the most expensive DLC, like it's a $70 expansion, and they're trying to call it a new game. That's exactly why people are saying that. And again, I just wanna make it really clear. For recent Call of Duty campaigns, this I don't think is really that bad. But compared to what we used to get from the older Call of Duty games, yeah, in comparison, this is bad. If we're comparing it to like Call of Duty 4, World of War, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 1, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, the originals and stuff, not even close. I think one of the biggest missteps with the recent Call of Duty games is that they're telling a majority of the story through cutscenes instead of through gameplay. I think that's actually what Modern Warfare 2019 did really well, is that they were telling the story through gameplay as well as cutscenes. They had a really nice balance. But if you look at a lot of the older Call of Duty games, most of the story was being told through gameplay. And they didn't have a really heavy focus on cutscenes, which is what's really different about these modern Call of Duty games. The gameplay and the objectives just feel really repetitive and overdone, and ultimately the story is based Basically just being told in cutscenes, which is like the equivalent of just watching a movie. But yes, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. I didn't want to drag this out for too long, but I figured I'd just mention that because people seem to think that I have like this overly positive review of the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. Whereas from my perspective, I'm just trying to find more value in the campaign because it's so short and because I really thought there wasn't that much to do, but it turns out there actually kind of is, at least if you look hard enough for it. So with that being said, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed watching me cover the new guns in Modern Warfare 3, which are actually kind of hard to find. If you guys did enjoy this video and you want to see some more new Modern Warfare 3 stuff, make sure to drop a like. See you guys later. Outcome. Tranquil.